Kalyani Educational Rhythms proudly presents a series of educational cassettes that will encourage young listeners to discover for themselves the fascinating world of science. You can experience and understand your daily life through science. Under these series are the following titles. Air, Water, Motion, Light, Sound, Heat and Electricity. Our title today is Electricity. I hope children, these cassettes will enlighten you and we promise you that you will enjoy the activities and experiments we deal with in the end. Happy listening! What is electricity? Electricity is our greatest friend. At home, it lights bulbs, moves fans, pumps water and works household gadgets. In offices and factories, it operates lifts, runs huge machines and produces all sorts of goods for us. It carries messages instantly from one corner of the world to another through telephones, telegraphs, faxes and computers. It lights the streets and runs trains it entertains us through movies and televisions. It is now difficult to imagine a world without electricity. Electricity was not invented but discovered by man. In other words, it is a natural phenomenon, a source of electricity that has always existed. The word electricity comes from the Greek word electron, which means amber. This refers to a particular effect, a Greek named Thales observed 2,500 years ago. He found that when amber is rubbed with a silk cloth, it starts attracting tiny bits of paper. We know now that this little trick is an electrical effect. The amber gains a charge of static electricity which gives it the power to attract objects. Other examples of objects gaining charge are When a glass rod is rubbed with silk, it gains a charge. And when an ebonite rod is rubbed with wool, it also gains a charge. Have you seen electricity? Electricity cannot be seen. We can only see the effects it produces. Have you seen lightning flash across the sky? Lightning is caused by electricity present in storm clouds. Did you ever notice tiny sparks and hear crackles while taking off a nylon sweater in a dark room? Both the sparks and the sound are produced by the electricity in your nylon sweater. Comb your hair with a plastic comb and hold it near small pieces of paper. What do you find? The pieces of paper are attracted by the electricity in your comb. And when you switch on a torch, the bulb glows. It is the effect of the electricity produced by the batteries in your torch. Switch your fan on. The blades move due to the electricity supplied to the wires in your house. There are two kinds of electricity. The electricity that causes lightning, sparks, crackling noises and attracts objects is contained in things like storm clouds, nylon and plastic and is called static electricity. Static electricity can be got by rubbing things together and is called static because it cannot move on its own. Electricity that flows through wires and does work for us, like lighting a torch, or working a fan is called current electricity. Current electricity is produced by batteries or by generators in power plants and is supplied to homes. And here's an interesting fact. Small currents are constantly flowing through our nerves. When you see something, 
an image of that object forms at the back of your eye the optic nerves carry this information from the eye to your brain in the form of a current only then do you realize what you see our body muscles too are controlled by the flow of electrical currents from the brain down to the nerves of the muscles can you tell me do all things contain electricity to know let us look at the structure of things if we keep breaking a piece of iron say into smaller and smaller pieces we would ultimately be left with a single unit of iron called an iron atom like iron all things are made of atoms atoms are too tiny to be seen atoms contain even tinier particles called neutrons protons and electrons neutrons and protons form the central core of atoms around which electrons keep circling the simplest atom is the hydrogen atom it has one electron and one proton some atoms can be really complex electrons and protons have a fixed but small amount of electricity or charge neutrons have no charge the charge of an electron and that of a proton are equal in strength but opposite in effect electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged they are shown by the minus and plus signs as an atom contains an equal number of electrons and protons it has no charge and is said to be electrically neutral in general the total number of electrons and protons in an object is also equal so that it has no net charge somehow if this balance gets upset then the object shows signs of being charged with electricity did you know that scientists call the electric charge on a glass rod rubbed with silk as positive and the charge on an ebonite rod rubbed with wool as negative when two negative charges are brought near each other they repel each other in the same way when two positive charges are brought near each other they too repel each other however if we bring a negative and a positive charge together they will attract each other thus we can conclude that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other the basis of all electrical phenomena is charge matter is generally made up of protons electrons and neutrons which we have already spoken of once electricity had been discovered scientists set about trying to manufacture the first results in this direction were obtained from machines based on the simple electrostatic principle of rubbing the task at issue was basically to produce on a larger scale the ancient phenomenon found with amber a system accordingly had to be found for preserving the charged state so that the flow of electrons could be supplied continuously thus creating an electric current the first person to do this was the italian scientist alessandro volta in 1800 he invented the battery a device consisting of two electrodes of different metals immersed in a solution of salt the chemical reactions occurring in the battery between the salt and the two metals have the effect of transferring electrons continuously from one electron which becomes positive to the other which becomes negative up to the end of the last century batteries were the main source of electrical energy the voltaic cell however is not a good source of electricity since the flow through the wire is not smooth nor steady 
The imperfections of the voltaic cell were improved by J. F. Daniel in 1836 when he invented the Daniel cell. However, since this cell too used liquids as electrolytes, they were found to be rather cumbersome. This disadvantage too was overcome in 1866 with the invention of the dry cell by Leclanche, who was a French scientist. In 1859, a French scientist called Gaston Plante invented a cell in which the chemical reaction which gives rise to the electric current could be reversed. When this is done, the original chemicals are restored and the cell is ready to function again. Such rechargeable cells are called storage batteries. Some time ago, scientists discovered some special materials which have a remarkable property. When light is incident on these materials, a current begins to flow through them. Such cells have come to be called solar cells. A simple solar cell consists of a wafer of silicon in which some arsenic atoms have been embedded. This wafer is coated with a thin layer of silicon and boron. When light falls on this arrangement, a current begins to flow in the wire connecting the two wafers. We frequently use metal wires to provide a path for an electric current. Unlike metal wires, some materials do not allow an electric current to pass through them. Such materials are called insulators. Materials which allow an electric current to pass through them are called conductors. If we connect a source of current like a battery cell in a closed circuit, a steady current flows through the metal wires of the circuit. Such a steady flowing in one direction is called direct current or simply DC. However, the current that flows in our household appliances is not direct current. This current starts from zero, flows in one direction, gradually rising to a maximum value. It then suddenly decreases to zero at the same pace. At this point, the current reverses its direction of flow and increases to its maximum value, flowing in the opposite direction. After it reaches its maximum value, it then decreases to zero again. This cycle of increasing in one direction, decreasing to zero, flowing in the opposite direction and again decreasing to zero is endlessly repeated. This type of current is called alternating current or AC. The current flowing through the appliances in our house completes 50 such cycles of waxing and waning every second. Most of the electricity that we use today in our homes or in our factories is alternating current. Alternating current is easier to generate in larger quantities and above all is easier to transmit from one place to another. Battery In its simplest form, a battery consists of two metallic plates immersed in a chemical solution or a paste-like mixture of chemicals. Due to chemical reactions, positive and negative charges of the solution or paste separate. Positive charges accumulate on one plate known as the positive plate and negative charges accumulate on the negative plate. Due to this, there is a potential difference between the plates. The chemical reactions ensure that the potential difference between the plates remains constant. A battery, therefore, converts chemical energy into electrical energy. The whole material of the battery is enclosed in a container. Terminals connected to the plates come out of the container. A battery is thus a device which keeps a constant potential. Batteries used in torches, 
transistors radios toys etc is called a dry cell these cells maintain a potential difference of 1.5 watts between the terminals and therefore are called 1.5 watt cells car batteries are much bigger and contain dilute sulfuric acid in them electrical current in a circuit can be measured using an instrument called ammeter and the potential difference across an element can be measured by an instrument called voltmeter in an ammeter there is a needle which can move over a graduated scale when no current is passing the end of the needle stays at the zero of the scale marked usually on the left extreme two terminals marked positive and negative are provided generally at the back wires are connected to the terminals in such a way that the current enters the ammeter through the terminal marked positive and leaves through the terminal marked negative the needle deflects on the graduated scale to show the presence of current as well as its value if the ammeter is removed from a circuit the current will stop flowing such a connection is called a series connection thus two or more electric elements are connected in series if the same current passes through all the elements the charge passing per unit time through a given place is called the electric current at that time a voltmeter too has two terminals marked plus and minus which is positive and negative and there is a needle which deflects on a graduated scale to show the potential difference however unlike an ammeter if the voltmeter is removed from the circuit the current still flows such a connection is called a parallel connection thus a parallel connection can be defined as two or more electric elements are said to be connected in parallel if the same potential difference is applied across them ohm's law when a torch is used for several weeks its light becomes dim what does this mean it means that the potential difference between the terminals has been reduced when it is used for a long time it is able to maintain only a smaller potential difference less charge flows through it therefore the current through metallic element is proportional to the potential difference applied between its end provided the temperature remains constant this statement is known as ohm's law if a potential difference v is applied to an element and a current i passes through it where r is a constant for the given element and is called its resistance every conductor will allow an electric current to flow through it but depending on the material of which it is made and its cross section it offers a certain resistance to the current the unit of resistance is called ohm If the resistance is small this would mean more current would flow such elements are called good conductors when an electrical current passes through a bulb the wire gets heated and emits light thus when a current is passed through a wire internal energy is produced in the wire power is the rate of doing work or rate at which energy is produced it is measured in joules per second that is watt power is measured in joules per second that is watt another unit is kilowatt hour it is the energy used in 1 hour at the rate of 1000 watts electric power plants The electricity that we use in our houses, factories and industries is generated in big power plants. In a typical power plant, 
there is a coil wound around on a core which is coupled to a turbine by the turbine shaft a turbine has a rotor with blades steam gas or water at high pressure is made to fall on these blades to make them turn and rotate the rotor the coil wound on the core rotates with the turbine the coil is placed in a strong magnetic field and electricity is generated when the coil rotates power plants are classified as 1 thermal power plants where water is boiled in big boilers using coil as the fuel the steam produced is sent to the turbine to drive the blades 2 hydel power stations where water is used to rotate the blade nuclear power station where energy is generated by breaking the nuclei of uranium this generates lot of heat and the heat is used to boil water and steam is used to rotate the turbine hazards of electricity we should take proper care when handling electrical appliances necessary precautions include 1 all connections at switches plugs sockets etc must be tight wires should be of proper thickness and well insulated 2 any exposed part of the wire must be insulated 3 all sockets should have switches on them 4 fuses should be used in each section fuses easily melt when a large current passes through them thus breaking the circuit and preventing overloading 5 All appliances should be grounded. Six. In case of fire, the main switch should be quickly switched off. Thus, by following these precautions, we can safeguard against any accidents. There are some more electrical house rules. Although you have been experimenting with electricity and perhaps feeling more at ease while dealing with it, always remember that electricity is dangerous. Many electric fires kill people. Many people die from electrocution as well. It is best to be cautious. But you need not panic. Electricity is of great help if you know the rules of the game. The three electrical house rules are: one, know about the basic electrical components used at home; two, have a periodical electrical safety checkup; and three. be an electricity conservationist let us take a look at some of the electrical components you see every day our home supply is 220 volts ac mains it is fed to the switch boards through complex wiring apart from on off switches and a fan regulator you will find two kinds of outlet points called sockets or plug points one is the small two or three pin point and the other is a large three pin socket the smaller point can supply a maximum current of 5 amperes the bigger one is called a power point it can provide a maximum of 15 amperes of current refrigerators heaters coolers etc should always be connected to power points The small plug points are meant for lighting bulbs and running other low power gadgets like radios and tape recorders. A multi point plug has two or three plug points. Different electrical appliances can be run from a multi point plug. Suppose you want to use a hot plate, a bulb and an electric iron from the same plug point. Can you do it? Let's find out. All electrical appliances are rated in watts. A watt is a measure of the amount of electricity an appliance uses. A watt is equal to the voltage times the current used. That is, one watt is equal to one volt into one ampere. Suppose you connect a hot plate of one thousand watts, a bulb of hundred watts. and an iron of 750 watts to a plug which totals to 1850 watts so the total wattage adds up to 
1850 watts you know that the main supply is 220 volts as 1 ampere is equal to 1 watt divided by 1 volt the current used by the hot plate plus the bulb plus the iron is equal to 1850 divided by 220 which is 8.4 amperes just imagine the hot plate the bulb and the iron will forcefully draw their required 8.4 amperes of current from your plug point which can safely supply only 5 amperes in other words you have put more load or overloaded your line never do that this is dangerous it can blow up the entire electrical connection of your house in order to avoid this danger a fuse box is attached to the house wiring a fuse box has a number of fuses all connected to different circuits a fuse is a piece of thin wire which melts and breaks the circuit if the current is greater than what it should be now with the help of someone older open a fuse box and take a look inside take out a fuse and look at the connection you can easily replace a fuse wire many electrical appliances have their own fuses attached to them modern houses have electronic circuit breakers instead of fuses have you ever seen a circuit breaker check the voltage of things around take three bulbs of different strengths that is 40 watts 60 watts and 100 watts check what is written on them with the help of an elder person connect them to a table lamp socket which one glows the brightest and why check the voltage rating of a heater an electric iron a fan and a refrigerator you will notice that all electrical appliances have a label to specify the wattage and the voltage to which it should be connected do note that some labels have 240 volts or 250 volts written on them instead of 220 volts do a periodical electric safety checkup look for frayed cords on electrical appliances and fixtures especially near the plugs never touch bare wires exposed by a damaged cord while the cord is plugged cover all unused electrical outlets with plugs or insulated tape never leave light sockets open remove bulbs that are fused only when you have a new one to replace never insert a screw driver into a plug point electricians use a tester to test whether a plug point is working or not never connect high voltage appliances to a two pin plug point a two pin point has no earthing wire to earth the appliance you may receive a shock when you touch it never touch switches and electrical appliances with wet hands water is a good conductor of electricity and so are you never leave a television set or a computer monitor on when out of the house be an electricity conserver electricity is expensive use it carefully remember the discomfort during power cuts and that should make you consume less for starters turn off lights fans and the tv when they are not needed use air conditioners and heaters sparingly do not waste hot water and open the refrigerator door as seldom as possible now on to electric current to light a bulb all you need to do is press a switch when the switch is on an electric current flows through the wire what is this current made of wires have a really large number of loose electrons that move about within it in a random way a battery or the main supply at home pushes these free electrons so that they all move in one direction an electric current consists of a flow of these electrons did you know that there are two types of currents dc or direct current which is produced by batteries and flows in one direction they are used in automobiles and flashlights ac or alternating current 
continually reverses the direction of its flow. The current supplied to homes and schools through the main supply is alternating current. Can current flow through everything? To test, first make this simple connection. For this you will need a small torch bulb and socket, a 9 volt battery, two battery clips, three 10 inch long insulated wires and along with that you will need certain things which are to be tested. Aluminium foil, pencil, glass, paper clip, plastic, a coin, key and an eraser. Now, remove one inch of plastic from the ends of the wires. Connect two wires to the two terminals of the battery. Connect one of these wires to an end of the bulb and socket. Then, attach the third wire to the other end of the bulb. Place the objects under test on the table and touch them one by one with the free ends of the wires. Be sure to touch only the insulated part of the wires with your hand. What happens each time? Note down your result. You must have found that some materials made the light bulb glow. These materials, like the aluminium foil, paper clip, coin and the key, allow current to flow through them. They are conductors of electricity. Most metals are good conductors. Other materials such as wood, glass, plastic and rubber are examples of bad conductors of electricity. They are called insulators. Insulators are as useful as conductors in making a current flow from one place to another. Can you tell me why? We use the conductors to carry electricity where it is needed and we use insulators to prevent it from leaking into places where we do not want it. Wires used in electrical connections are covered with plastic to make them safe to handle. This is called insulation. Look for insulation in wires. Collect different types of wires, cut them to check the insulation. Thick wires have rubber covers wrapped with thread as insulation. Pure water is a pure conductor of electricity. Pure water is free of impurities. Tap water, which is not filtered, is a good conductor of electricity. Dry air is also a poor conductor of electricity. But wet air is not. Change pure water into a better conductor of electricity in this manner. You will need a light bulb and socket, three one foot lengths of insulated wire, a nine volt battery, a drinking glass, distilled water and half cup salt. Remove one inch of insulation from both ends of each wire. Connect the light bulb and socket, the wires and the battery. Fill pure distilled water into the glass. Place the bare wires in the glass of water. Make sure your hands do not touch the water or the wire. Does the bulb light up? Add salt to the glass of water. Does the bulb light up now? Take care. Did you know that you are a very good conductor of electricity? Remember to handle all electrical appliances with care when near water. Never touch switches and wires with wet hands. Always wear rubber slippers when working with electrical circuits. This will insulate your body. Can you measure electric current? A galvanometer is a current measuring instrument. It detects the presence of an electric current. For this you will need a magnetic compass, a 9 volt battery, a block of wood 4 inches into 5 inches into 1 inch, the cover of a small cardboard box, 4 board pins, 2 paper clips, and some insulated wire. Wrap about 10 turns of the insulated wire around the cardboard. Scrape the insulation from the wire ends. 
placed the cardboard on the block of wood and secured it in place with board pins. Do not push the pins down completely. Now, wrap the ends of the wires around two board pins. Bend the paper clips in half, slip the clips under the pins and push the pins down firmly. Place the magnetic compass inside the lid of the box. Connect two wires to the two terminals of the battery. Fix one of these wires to one clip. Touch this other paper clip with the second wire. What do you observe? The compass needle moves, showing that there is a magnetic field around. A flow of current through the wires created this magnetic field. If a scale could be attached to the compass, you could actually measure current. An ampere is a measure of the strength of current. Electric gifts. From electrical energy, we mainly get heat, light, motion and magnetism. Heat and light from electricity. Electricity heats up things as it forces its way through them. The greater the resistance, the greater is the heat produced. Sometimes the conductor becomes warm as in the case of an electric iron. Sometimes red hot as in a heater or a toaster and at other times white hot as in an electric bulb. Long and thin wires made of special materials which have very large resistance are used to make heat. The wire is wound into a coil so that it takes less space. This is called a heating coil or an element. Magnetism from electricity Magnetism produced by an electric current is called electromagnetism. A magnet of this kind is called an electromagnet. Electromagnets have many uses, such as in electric cells, loudspeakers, electric motors and generators. Now make yourself an electromagnet. For this, you will need to wind 20 turns of a copper wire around a nail. Connect the ends of the wire to a 9 volt battery through a switch. Press the switch and bring some paper clips near the coil. What do you notice? The nail has turned into a magnet due to the current in the wire. So friends, I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed learning all about electricity. But remember all the warnings that we gave you? Be very very careful when you handle any electrical gadget. You can help your mother out in the house and be a handyman. Happy learning, happy listening.